Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marconi Stadium for round eight of the MPL Men's New South Wales competition. It's the second placed Marconi Stallions hosting the second bottom Central Coast Mariners Academy. The Mariners will be desperate to start getting some points on the board, otherwise they will face that difficult task of a relegation battle being so early on in the season. Something that will be most definitely on the mind and minds of everyone involved at the Mariners. Whereas for Marconi, well, their current state of affairs, they'll be expecting to be challenging for the Premiership and later on for Championship glory. I'll go through the lineups of both teams for you quickly. One change to each team from last weekend's games for the Marconi Stallions. Number one, James Hilton in goals. Number two, Nathan Milgate. Number three, Cameron Windust. Number four, Anton Linaric. Number six, and Dominic Costanza, the only change from last week's team. Number seven, Franco Maya. Number 10, Marko Jesic. Number 11, Hiroaki Ayama. Number 18, George Daniel. Number 23, Brandon Vela. And number 25, Jonathan Suarez. As mentioned earlier, Dominic Costanza, the only change coming in for, for Dylan Susovic for the Central Coast Mariners. Just one change for them as well. Jack Wachowski is out of the squad this week. Dylan Perret Cullen comes in. In goals, that is. And number two, Michael Paragali. Number three, Sher Deng. Number four, Andre Parks. Number five, Harry Menem. Number eight, Lucas Kikuma. Number 10, Lucas Smythe. Number 11, Donatian Nionkuru. Number 16, Prayag Thapa. Number 37, Bar Braley Brantman. And number 39, Adam Hall. Interesting to note most of this Marconi bench. They offer attacking players. Some firepower they have on the bench. Most of these players could find a starting spot across the MPL competition, no doubt. Number eight, Daniel Bowman. Number nine, James Tomulkovsky, who comes back after missing a couple weeks with an injury. Dylan Sulcevic, who did start last week. Milislav Popovic also returning from injury. Yakov Malbush are scoring his first goal in Marconi colours in first grade last weekend. Also on the bench and reserve goalkeeper Mackenzie Siren. For the Central Coast Mariners, Mate Busek, Ty Headley. Yani Nassis, Jay Ayanovic, Rocco Smith and Alex Guntunas on substitutes. Hasn't been the best of starts for the Mariners. Just one win in their opening seven games and here's Costanzo early. Ball sprayed out wide, comes back in toward Yashic who heads it on. Already the home team putting the Mariners under some early pressure. Trying to come out of the blocks quickly. Frank Fisher, the man in the middle. For this one, blows the free kick the way of the Marconi Stallions. And Lucas Villela would have had some work to do and Seems that defensively is where the Mariners seem to be struggling at the moment. Good punch there from Cullen in goals. They have the worst defensive record in the league. The Central Coast Mariners conceding 21 goals so far in their opening seven games. Which means they're averaging three goals a game conceded. Something that needs to be tightened up by Villela. Yeshish with a long throw, looking for Milgate, headed out for a corner, the first corner of the evening. Beautiful evening here for football in Bosley Park. The pitch is perfect as well. No excuse from both teams not to perform at the best of their ability this evening. The first corner will come in now. Good delivery, headed away. Still not fully clear though. Nyonkuru sends it on. Nyonkuru, a very 
dangerous threat in the front third. Has a lot of speed. Good technique as well. Can cause defences some issues. Hasn't been able to show everything that he has in his locker at the moment due to the season that the Mariners are having. But keep an eye on him. Four falls for Costanzo. That was a great volley. And back again for Ayama, but a little wild and well off target in the end. In fact, it was Maya that sent that volley. It looked goal bound. I think Cullen would have had some difficulty keeping that one out had it found the target. Another opportunity for the home team. And the Mariners have not got out of their half yet. Three minutes in is their first opportunity now. And again, the ball stays in this part of the pitch. Here's Yeshic. Taking possession now. Windust coming up against his former club, Cameron Windust. Couple X Mariners in the mix here for Marconi. Going through the Mariners Academy. They now call the Palace home here. Maya back for Millgate who didn't take any risks so he just plays it forward but couldn't find Brandon Vela in space down the right. Heads it on toward Maya, who tries to bulldoze his way through, but cleared away in the end. And now Neon Guru trying to get on the loose ball. George Daniel really making it difficult for him. And the foul goes against Neon Kuru. I have to admit, I thought that George Daniel had no eyes for the ball and all eyes for Neon Kuru trying to slow him down. He's obviously read the pre match notes and He's aware of the pace that Neon Kuru possesses. In the end, has to be said, intelligent defending. Won the foul. From my viewpoint, I thought the foul could have gone the other way. Pinch the ball again here, Marconi. Suarez still in possession and gave it away now. Ayama can't pick it up and the Mariners may be able to hold on to the ball for the first time in this game Cullen sends it forward they didn't hold it for long Windust will take the throw in heads it on Neon Kuru tried to turn away from Suarez instead the ball went to Maya who fed it wide for Costanzo but just a little too much on that pass it was the right idea not quite the execution though Cullen under a bit of pressure from Yeshic, dealt with that well. Now Deng to his goalkeeper as they play a bit of keep ball. Two games played so far this round earlier today. There was a, well, it has to be said, quite a shocking result coming out of Seymour Shaw. And it wasn't the fact that Sutherland came away with the points, it was the fact that. Apia put seven past a hapless Sutherland Sharks, winning 7-0. It was 4-0 at the break. They added three more in the second half. An absolute dominant display from Apia. And a poor showing from the Sharks, no doubt. While at Belmore, we were treated to somewhat of a classic match between two old NSL Giants. National second division teams as Sydney Olympic came away with a 4 3 victory against the Wollongong Wolves. A 
and the Wolves were winning and look cruising toward all three points. As stoppage time emerged, they're winning 3 2 there for goals in the 91st minute. And the winner arriving in the final moments of that game via Roy, o Roy O'Donovan. And that Belmore went nuts. Sydney Olympic recorded a massive victory. 4-3 Olympic took the points there against the Wolves. Wolves winning 2-0 at halftime as well. Olympic got themselves back in the game, got it level at 2-2. 10 minutes from the end. Wollong retook the lead. Only for that frantic last few minutes where the home side recorded just their second win of the season if I'm not mistaken third in fact and pushes them up the ladder as well almost into the top half now Sydney Olympic and here is a free kick for Marconi in a very promising area and Marko Jesic when he stands over him they're always dangerous Jesic not this time though Allen didn't look too worried about that one at all in the Mariners' goal. You heard the shout, go. Stanzo looking for options. Plays it back. Ball into the area now. Maya and Ayama were both there. Still though, Marconi in possession. Milgate. Mlinaric. Leads the ball forward. Good pass to Costanzo. And it breaks here for Jesic now. Overlapping run from George Daniel. Villa arriving at the near post, at the far post. Sorry, that's where the ball was headed. But cleared away by the Mariners. And now Neon Kuru with a bit of space. But he couldn't control the ball. Cleared away by Hilton. Yeah, she stay intelligent. He just stood his ground, used his body, and headed it down for Ayama, but a poor pass from Hiroaki Ayama. And that the Mariners get possession again. Nyonkuru, the target here. Milic dealing with him well. Balls now for Lucas Smythe. Lucas Smythe scoring more than half of the Mariners' goals so far this season. Seven to his name has had quite a successful campaign so far. Unlike his team, I'll be hoping that he can lead them to some points as the season goes on. Good ball by Ayama. Intelligent first touch pass. And now Yeshich feeds the ball wide for Costanzo. He comes in. Costanzo just wide of the pose. And he'll feel as though he should have slotted that one into the far corner. He did everything right up until the finish. Dominic Costanzo. Cullen sending it forward toward Lucas Smythe. Milgate won the header, but straight into the feet of the Mariners. A late challenge there on Paragali. And it'll be a free kick to the visitors. First time the Mariners can put a bit of pressure on Hilton's goal here. Deng drives forward. Pass though, cut out. Poor pass there by Deng. Last touch coming off Harry Menham. 
It'll be a throw to Marconi. Strong challenge there from Adam Hall. As we mentioned, two games played. Three to come tonight. Hills United, Manly, Western Sydney and St. George. And of course here at Bosley Park. But goals already inside the first eight minutes at Wanderers Football Park. St. George took the lead in the fifth minute. The Wanderers equalised only two minutes later. 1-1 one, one there already. for the Stallions and should results go their way at Wanderers Football Park they could be top of the table at the end of play for today and at the end of round 8 it's interesting how this season has kicked off it really does look as though there's 6 teams that are somewhat Slightly more dominant at the moment. The Wanderers, Marconi, Arpia, Rockdale, Blacktown and Wollongong. The Giants such as Sydney United and Sydney Olympic are slowly starting to build. And a, well, a hopeful effort there from Hall goes well over the bar. Some troubling Hilton with that sort of an effort. As I said, teams like Sydney United, Sydney Olympic are starting to find their feet. St. George, City will... You know, honesty, it's been a bit of a disappointing campaign from them so far. Would have expected to be a little higher. I know this is a team that only got promoted a couple of years ago, but still, I have a feeling they may be have been a little bit more expected this year. Still, though, they're sitting in eighth place. Only two losses for the campaign. Again, definitely will feel they've dropped unnecessary points. Another team that can really shake things up. Hilton comes very high out and you'll notice that James Hilton spends a lot of his time well outside his box. And now Neon Kuru, can he get there before the goalkeeper? And that's why it's so effective, him sitting so high. When that ball does beat that last line of defence, he's not too far away from it. And on most occasions, he should get there first. And yes, it's just couldn't bring that one down. A little bit too much height on that from Milgate. The game has settled somewhat, allowing the Mariners to settle themselves. Heavy touch there by Smythe. Ayama intercepts and now Deng gives it away. Vela tried to play it early but it's closed down by Menem. Hall takes it forward. Throws it wide right to Neon Kuru. And a challenge there from George Daniel into the back of Neon Kuru. Foul goes the way of the Mariners. Ball given away there. Can Marconi make the Mariners pay here? It's Maya. Back for Ayama. And Ayama now beats the first couple defenders. Plays it out to Vela. He picks it up again. Ayama twists and turns. Well played here from Ayama and cleared away. Paragali coming in at the right time into the area to head that one clear. Cullen taking no risk, sending it forward. see Villela very animated on the sideline aside from those opening five minutes you 
feel that he's pretty pleased with how his team's come into the game now. They did look a little shaky. But the problem is they need to continue that for the next 80 minutes or so. Offside flag raised there on Costanzo. That is perhaps the biggest problem that the Mariners face. They do have a very young team. Consistency and confidence and concentration as well for 90 minutes. Sometimes lacks from young footballers. In particular defensively and once they lose their discipline you feel that they've considered a lot of goals Due to that, 21 goals in seven games, most definitely, is way too many. A massive reliance on the attacking players to score more than the opposition, but when you're conceding three, it's very difficult to score four in a game. Last week against Spirit. The Mariners almost came away with a point. Some desperate defending by Northwest Sydney Spirit. And sure, they got the three points there. That was a massive game for both these teams. And it's interesting you say in a competition like this that after seven games played, that games are already so important and have so much on the line. Most occasions you'd say it's a very long season and what have you, but the way things are looking so far, every point is golden at the moment. That victory for David Perkovic's spirit really sets them up now. They've got rocked out tomorrow. And they take on St. George, another one of those teams that you'll be expecting to be in the bottom half of the competition ladder. Perkovic's team can enter that fixture. Just a little bit more freedom. Great touch there from Maya. Spreads it wide now for Costanzo. We'll go one on one here. Use his pace. Yes, it's in the area, but a poor ball into the box from Costanzo to be a little sharper. A bit more angle on it toward the near post. throw will come in again. Milgate's gone forward once more. As has Windust. Ball goes in toward Milgate. Flicked on toward Windust. Put it away now. And as far as Suarez who has a go from some way out. But offside flag raised on Costanzo. Good challenge there from Windust. Then comes away with it. Milgate followed that one all the way. Marconi have obviously opted to go for a much younger team. You look at the squad and the experienced players are Yeshic and Milgate. The rest are quite young with a lot of years of football ahead of them. Milgate and Yeshic will both tell you they've got a long way to go still as well. Peter, P Peter to Kenneth and Peter Papayev both know what they're doing in terms of building their squad. The youngsters such as Susovic and Malbasha on the bench show a clear angle in which the club wishes to move forward in and with national second division potential around the corner. Definitely thinking of the future of the Marconi Stadions. 
How about that run from Costanza on the opposite side? Wasn't spotted by Suarez. Had the ball being played over the top of Paragali. I think Costanza may have been in a very good position to attack Cullen's goal. Looks as though there's a bit of a problem here. Andre Parks, who was struggling there. It was. He'd gone down, but seems to be back to his feet. Medical staff from the Mariners just checking in to see he's okay. He's given the thumbs up, but we'll see how bad this injury could potentially be. He's dang. Almost turned in a very dangerous area with Maya right on his back. He's Smythe. Gives the ball away. Ayama now. Well, to keep possession there, Ayama. I thought he was going to lose that one. Tried a couple challenges there. Thapa tried to play the ball forward for Brantman, but Milgate came across and defended well. Vela. Suarez. Lunaric saw the run, heard the call, and played the ball perfectly. Well defended by Parks. Can Costanza get the better of him? And again, Parks stands tall. Good defending. Two players to contend with, and in those sort of situations, you want to win something. And that's exactly what Dom Costanzo did. Won his team a corner. The dangerous from these with the likes of Milgate. And wind dust. Can't forget Munich either. Cross comes in toward the near post. Not really dealt with now. Parks clears away. Ayama. Didn't really head that anyway. Look at the space for Neon Kuru. If they can find him, they've gone the opposite way, but still may be on here. And Brantman gets to it, keeps it in and runs in that goal now. Good feet from Brantman. Still Brantman. He just got confused there in the end. Wasn't sure what to do with it. Still got the ball though. Finds the pass for Lucas Smythe. Neon Kuru on the turn. Milgate comes across and diffuses the danger. And that's what the Mariners can offer on the counter. Still, I feel the wrong original pass. It should have been reversed to Neon Kuru, who was off and away. There was no way anyone was catching him. Thapa does well. Spread out wide by Brantman. Here's Thapa again. Brantman turns. Finds Smythe and almost... Threads it through there for Neon Kuru. And we've got a problem now for Prayag Thapa. That could be his evening done. The disappointing thing for Vilela will be that Thapa just started to get into the game the last few minutes. He went down with no challenge. Head is in his hand, so... Just by his reaction, I'd say that a substitution may be required here for the Mariners. I spoke about St. George FC earlier. They've just taken the lead against the Wanderers. A very well-structured team who it was extremely difficult to break down and with Nikolaj Kataric in some very good form, he started to find the back of the net for them. They now lead against the Wanderers by two goals to one.
Thapper's back to his feet. Thumbs up from the physio, so he may be okay to continue here. Ball sent forward by Hilton. Headed away by Parks. Greg Fisher saw the foul. Goes the way of the Mariners. Seems as though the tempo has died down really after a quick fire opening five minutes or so. Things have settled down. That'll probably suit the Mariners more so than Marconi. In particular because the young team is growing in confidence the longer they go without conceding a goal. The more they keep possession, the more chances they'll start to create, the more confidence they'll get. That's where things could become a little dangerous for the home team. They really are clear favourites here this evening. And they're expected to win and win well, especially after last week's win. But Marconi did start slowly last week as well. 0-0 at half time before they added three in the second period. Similar situation so far. Suarez, back for Mlinaric. Spreads a wide for Vela. Did well to keep that in, Brandon Vela. Coming across was Adam Hall to clear that one out. Stepping out high here, the Mariners now. Hilton finds the pass for Costanzo. They couldn't return the favour for George Daniel. And Tapper rides one challenge, looks to have recovered. Here he comes again, making another good sliding tackle. In fact, that was Kikuna, the Mariners captain, coming across and sliding in. trying to turn Deng. He's telling the assistant referees, got a hold of my jersey. Again, Millgate, Windust, go forward. Another long throw incoming. Just see, we feel that without Temulkovsky, Marconi really are missing something. Good ball in from Yershich, headed away. Flicked on now, Neon Kuru gets here first. Marconi's in trouble. And Leon Kuru breaks that last line in on Hilton now. Cuts it back onto the right, does he? No, well defended. George Daniel kept his feet, didn't dive in. That's what Leon Kuru was expecting. Probably should have hit that with the left before Daniel came across him. Instead, try to cut it on the right, but with no real drive to do so. The intent just wasn't there from Neon Kuru. And Daniel, plaudits to him, defended very well in that situation. Again, the Mariners on the break, showing their danger. Great run forward here from Deng, who's clipped by Vela. Free kick goes the way of the Mariners. Kikuna will take this free kick for the visiting side. Ball in toward the far post, headed away by Costanzo, now Millgate. 
first corner of the evening for the Mariners. Nathan Milgate not happy that he didn't get the free kick there. Craig Fisher just waved it away. Craig Fisher, one of the most respected referees in the competition. Also a bodybuilder, if you didn't know. Loves a fake tan, Craig Fisher does. Ball whipped into the area toward the far post. Milgate should deal with this. He does. Speed forward now, but no green jerseys there. Menem brings it down. Goals continue to fall at Wanderers Football Park. It's 2-2 now. Western Sydney equalising. Late challenge there from Menem. That'll be the first yellow of the evening. Mark only looked to be breaking away there through Franco Meyer. As Peter Tikenos gets his players on the bench to their feet to go and stretch the legs, keep warm. Ball gets into the area. Milgate looked challenging for that, as was Windust. Windust did get the header on, but not exactly where he wanted the ball to go. Skikluna paddling away with Ayama. Now Hilton under pressure here. That was another worrying moment for the home team. Got away with that great challenge from Deng. And Neon Kuru gets there first. Needs to find a teammate though. And error there from Neon Kuru. Really should have played the ball with a simple pass to a teammate. Instead went for the back heel. Not enough movement you feel from this front three from Marconi at the moment. A little too static. Yes, it's doing a lot of the hard work. I'm just unable to find the right pass, either left or right. Here's Daniel. Finds Yeshic. Costanzo, good ball from Costanzo, wide for Vela, has time to size this one up, Vela, great ball in, and that was some challenge from Deng, he had to get that right, because Ayama was arriving, and now perhaps the Mariners can break the other way, good challenge from Mlinaric, Maya, much on that one I think for Vela and it was again She Deng timed that perfectly because Ayama was arriving just behind him and I think if he got any sort of connection on that Dylan Cullen would have had serious trouble keeping that one out of his goal Great touch from Costanzo to get away from one. Neon Kuru back defending. Corner for Marconi. Comes in again to the near post. Headed away by Menem. We'll have to deal with that again. The visitors. Seems to be the angle. Like Costanzo is aiming for that near post. Waiting for someone to run onto the ball and flick it on. Comes in again, headed away by Deng. So important interceptions by Deng so far. We need to do another one here because here comes Costanzo. Paragali holding him up, but 
headed away only as far as Ayaba. And he's missed kicked the ball, looked for a penalty. Craig Fisher was in a very good position, waved it away. Asking the question of Fisher. That was forced back to his goalkeeper. Milovich gets there above Neon Kuru. Onside there, Deng kept everyone onside. Costanzo gets to the line. Costanzo should have whipped that in. I think he wanted to cut back onto the right foot. It was well defended by Paragali. There have to be another corner now for Marconi. They are starting to pile up. So far, though, well defended by the Mariners. Lots of movement in the area. We're trying to get rid of Lucas Smythe. Ball comes in, Cullen punches. Ayama's there. Still Ayama trying to get in front of Neon Kuru. Final touch coming off the Mariners' play. It'll be another corner. And Maya will deliver again. Again, Milgate and Smythe really having a real battle out there. And it goes toward Milgate, heads it back across goal. And Windust into the hands of Cullen. Excellent work from Milgate to have the composure and awareness to head it back. And unfortunately for Marconi, Windust couldn't beat the goalkeeper. Five minutes to go till half time. Zero zero so far at the Palace. Ayama looking for Yersic as holes are starting to appear in the Mariners' back line. Foul called back on Yersic. Still no goals at Landon Stadium between Hills and Manly. Same situation here at Marconi Stadium. Goals galore though at Wanderers Football Park. It's 2-2 there. did very well to pinch that ball off Costanzo now he's driving forward looking for Brentman I think it was but straight into the hands of the goalkeeper wanted a foul too Fisher said no here's Vela for Yeshic great use of the body there by Hall Smythe can't get past Mlinovic been a rock so far Anton Mlinovic as has most of the Marconi defence. If they've fallen into a spot of bother, they've recovered pretty well. Brantman playing that one forward for Hall, who gets there in front of Windust, and it took a deflection, and Hilton had to react as he did. And a wasted pass there from Suarez. see some halftime substitutions happening for the home team. Yes, she's maybe tucking into a more central role. Maya and Costanza operating left and right and 
we may see James Temulkovsky, depending on how many minutes he's been allocated from the medical staff or even Milislav Popovic. Timulkovsky, of course, Marconi's top scorer. Three goals this season. Popovic also has one scored the winner here against the Wollongong Wolves coming off the bench. So, as I said, lots of goals on the Marconi bench. Lots of firepower. If Tsikinis needs to make a substitution, absolutely has the weapons on the bench windows toward Yeshich then got a touch there heavy touch as well though almost taken advantage of by Maya Neon Kuru is just going down in back play there not sure what happened United have just taken the lead against Manly United. 1 0 now at Landon Stadium. So, goals everywhere but at Marconi Stadium. So, hopefully, we'll see some action soon as well. Leon Kuru has looked the most threatening Mariners player. Lilla won't want to see him too seriously injured or unable. He's up to his feet now, Neon Kuru. I'm sure he'll be fine to continue. As we approach final moments of the first half <coughs> Mariners in possession Deng has the ball Cullen. Minovic deals with the high ball and use of the hand there. It's a free kick for the home side and we'll have two minutes of additional time in the first half. Sent forward toward Maya. Deng did well to win that ball. Here's Costanzo slowly getting into the game. Daniel now, great ball in toward Yevsic, but headed away once more by Deng. Here's Vela. Forward for Suarez. Haven't seen much of him and almost there. Had he not lost his footing, he was ahead of his defender into the area. Here's Wind Dust. Suarez goes down, referee plays on. Costanzo gets there first, goes down. You could hear some contact, but not enough. Says Craig Fisher. Just a corner. Deliver the ball into the box. Potentially the last action of the first half. Ball comes in. Another good delivery. Headed away. Neon Kuru, good turn, but wins the foul. Smart defending. A smart turn by Neon Kuru. Felt the contact, went down, and won his team a free kick. We're into the third minute of stoppage time. There was an allocated two. 
as Cullen prepares to send this one forward. Strong in the air there from Millgate. We've got the watch from Fisher. As Menon prepares to take this throw. throw Deng wins the head up Skikluna plays it forward and that'll be that for the first half Craig Fisher's whistle goes after the first 45 minutes no goals here at Marconi Stadium it's been a tight game need a chance with a real clear cut opportunity as yet both had some decent half opportunities but neither able to really muster something where you could turn around and say well they should be in the lead okay, so half time though here at Marconi Stadium it's Marconi Stadium's zero Central Coast Mariners zero we'll see you back here again in 15 minutes for the second half
We're back here at Marconi Stadium for the second half. No goals in the first 45 minutes, and as suspected, we've had a half-time substitution. Top scorer for the Stallions this season, James Temulkovsky, has come on for the home side. And Jonathan Suarez is still on, so as are Costanzo and Maya. I'm sure who was the one replaced. I'll be sure to put you in as soon as I can. I think it may have been Brandon Vela who's made way. 4-4-2 uh, now for the Stallions. Yes, she's playing alongside the substitute Tim Wilkowski. Costanzo out left. Maya wide right is Daniel. Stenzo loses out. Great play by Skikluna. He'll keep this in as well, Skikluna. Lucas Smythe wanted it at the near post, but Skikluna just couldn't get his head up. His knee on Kuru. And there have been goals in the other two games playing at the same time. Hills lead 1-0. Western Sydney Wanderers scored a late goal to make it 3-2 as Lucas Smythe goes down and wins his team a free kick just outside the area. A very good opportunity. It's probably the perfect sort of area too. It's not too close to the edge of the box. Not too far either. Definitely a good opportunity here for the Mariners and Lucas Skikluna. To put a bit of pressure on James Hilton. Had to deal with a deflected cross into the box in the first half, and that was about the most work he had to do. Mariners had a couple half chances on the counter, but it was good defending from Mlinaric, Milgate, and George Daniel on one occasion as well. It's Brentman and Skikluna that stand over this. Lots of space if Skikluna goes for this on the right foot around the wall. And Yeshich has spotted that too. Drop back. I think it'll be Brentman. It's Brentman who goes direct. Took a deflection. And saved the corner there. And that'll be Marconi ball. Last touch coming off a Mariners player. Timulkovsky with his first touch. He's wind us now. Back for Milgate. Sends it forward. And Deng should comfortably deal with this. Tough ball back for Cullen. And Cullen's clearance was just as bad as the Deng pass, but got away with it for the moment. Now Costanzo bearing down. And a poor effort from Dom Costanzo in the end. Not really challenging Cullen with that sort of an effort. Milovich read the pass there and came across and intercepted. Brentman gets there ahead of Ayama. Now Menem. And you can see... As soon as James Timulkovsky has come on, just seems to be a bit more intense in the front third for the Stallions. As I said earlier, lots of attacking threat on that Marconi bench. Milislav Popovic, Dylan Susovic, Yakov Malbasha. All players that have scored goals already this season and all players that can make a difference at the moment. Marconi looking pretty desperate to score. 
I'll be very disappointed if they're held to a draw here. Yeshich, Tomokovsky had straight offside, but got back on now. Great ball wide here for Maya, but his touch let him down. Into the back there, kept his feet, kept the ball, pushing the back again from Menem, who is on a yellow card. Needs to be a little careful there. Harry Menem. Mlinovic. A bit of a risk with an extra couple touches and gave the ball away in the end as well. Came back across to win it. Big hole there in the defence now, though, if Marconi lose the ball and George Daniel ensures they don't. Great touch and great feet from Stick Luna. Brentman now for Neon Kuru, who's definitely got a lot more pace than Mlinaric. Neon Kuru one on one, but Daniel's there in support. Back at Suarez, and he did well to come away, and that's a bad challenge from Neon Kuru. We get a yellow card for his troubles. Frustrated challenge there from Neon Kuru. Mlinovic had stood him up and done very well. Hilton headed away though and really has to deal Bit of head tennis there Deng plays it forward now Menem in a good position haven't seen him get this far forward too many times in the first half cross goal and Hilton reads that one and collects And sends it forward. And Deng shout, shouted out for that one and cleared away. Good tackle there from Windust. And Costanzo now may think about attacking Paragali, but again, Paragali's been very good as well. And a foul there by Ayama. Consistent fouling earns him a yellow card. out there to win us but the Mariners come away with it Papa couldn't bring it down Costanzo now if you can see Tomulkovsky out here on the left and that's a yellow card now for Thapa there coming out thick and fast from Craig Fisher it's three yellow cards in the space of well, I'd say five minutes at least Kicking now for Marconi. Franco Maya will deliver. Ball toward the far post. Milgate's attacking that. Milgate finds Yoshi to heads at home, but the flag is raised. And it was Milgate that was offside and tangled up in the net. Uh, Marco Yoshic. And Harry Menem. The home side thought they'd finally found the goal they've been looking for. The assistant referee's flag was raised and erased that one off the scoreboard pretty quickly. Still 0 0 here. 
Another poor kick there from Cullen. Got away with it though. Milinovic couldn't find the pass. And now Ski Kluna driving forward. Menem there in support. Options in the box. Menem sends this one high. It's a tough one to deal with. Paragali. And it's a goal. The flag's raised. I thought that Milgate may have kept Bretman on side. I think it was. That was very, very tight. Milgate was on the goal line. It seemed like that anyway. Two goals disallowed in a matter of moments. And now Lucas Smythe gets there ahead of the goalkeeper. Still Smythe. Couldn't keep it in there. Thapa. Brantman was looking for Smythe. And Milinovic deals with that. Sends it clear away. Hilton sends this one forward. Costanzo didn't want much of that. Paragali did though, and now he drives forward. Smythe wide for Neon Kuru, who'll do well to keep that in. and will get us restarted with the goal kick. Looks as though both teams may be preparing substitutions. Vilela chatting to two players on the bench. Looks as though I think that's Milislav Popovic that's getting the gear on as well. Had a bit of a more intense warm-up in or well, during the break, sorry. Popovic. Temulkovsky ready to go. Popovic looks to be the second substitution. And Vilela will respond with two of his own. Great ball forward here for Brentman. Smythe, he flicked it on for Brentman. He just didn't read the ball. I don't know if he would have got there either. Here's Paragali. Clips it toward Lucas Smythe. Cameron Windust as well to shield that one out. That change will happen now. <coughs> In fact, it's Daniel Bowman will come on for Jonathan Suarez. A look for like change in midfield. Suarez didn't really get into the game much in the second half. Started okay, but drifted away as the game went on. And really, as I said earlier, the Mariners are just growing in confidence here. They're getting better as the game goes, and it's where Marconi have to stamp their authority somewhat. And they need to find that goal soon or risk being, playing that game in a 0-0 where anything can sort of go. We've seen the Mariners already create a few problems. And look at Neon Kuru now. These are the sort of issues they can cause. Milgate, though, experience there, getting his body in front of the ball and making sure that Neon Kuru wasn't going to use his pace to get about him. Stemulkovsky fouls Parks. And now double change for the visitors as well. 
Matej Busek is coming on. Adam Hall is coming off. And Ty Headley also comes in. Place of Neon Kuru. That is a questionable one. I thought Neon Kuru, as I said earlier, was probably the most dangerous player on the park along with Lucas Smythe. See how these changes affect either team. They've both made two now. The Mariners have most definitely started this second half pretty brightly. They've looked dangerous, but here is Maya, whose shots deflected out, almost falling the way of Costanzo. Either way now is Lunaric. Forward by Maya for Yeshic. Giving Deng a bit of trouble. Ayama. Looking for Costanzo. What a ball from Ayama. And Costanzo gets it all wrong. Hasn't been his night so far. Dominic Costanzo. Things haven't really bounced the way he would have liked. As Malba, Shastusevic and Popovic all get to their feet to go through their little runs. Good challenge there from George Daniel. From Headley, now Paragali, what can he do here? Really chooses his body well. A bit of a tough area, but just put his body there, waited for the contact. And won the free kick. Western Sydney have extended their lead now. It's 4-2 over St. George. Paragali goes back and a tough ball to deal with for Parks. And now Yeshic finds Temulkovsky on the turn. Temulkovsky looking for the option, but they all very quickly diminished. And his pass wasn't the best either. Fisher blows the whistle for a free kick for Marconi. Something that Villela and the Mariners bench were up to complain about very quickly. These teams have drawn a game each this season. Just the one game. Marconi against Rockdale 2-2. Central Coast against Manly, also 2-2. Flat delivery toward Millgate, headed away. Yes, it will send another long throw into the area now. To the box bounced about but Cullen off his line to pick it up Parks Ski Kluna for Deng under pressure here still choosing to play the ball out Thapa now look how many green shirts putting the press on Eventually, Marconi win it. Looks as though the Mariners may be next to make another change. Intense warm ups going on on the far side couple of their players. 
As Yeshich prepares another long throw, calling Windus forward. Windus flicks it on. Tim Wilkowski was trying to get in the way. Hand ball, it looked as though there. Fisher says it was accidental. Yeshich will be a corner to Marconi. Fisher having some strong words with Windust. We're explaining to him that the ball came off the foot before it hit the hand. That's why it wasn't a free kick. Now Costanzo to deliver this one. Again, knee post. Temelkovsky heads that one into the goal. And Marconi lead here. They've been making that near post ball all game long. Finally, someone got there. It was the substitute, James Temulkovsky, that scores his fourth of the season. And after returning from injury, puts the Marconi Stallions one goal up here against the Central Coast Mariners. Sixty-sixth minute. Finally, the home team finds the goal to put them ahead here. Costanzo delivered about seven corners in the first half, all to that near post area. That was the intended ball all game. And again, here getting in front now is Bowman, almost slipping in Yeshich there. Now the confidence flows through the Marconi team and they look more and more threatening. Same area. Will be the same delivery again? Let's see if Tim Wilkowski's run this time is followed. Instead they go short to Ayama. And Cullen should have that. He does. Landed on his neck there pretty heavily. Craig Fisher quick to call on the medical staff of the Mariners. You hope Cullen's okay here. Yes, he didn't do too much wrong. The keeper just came in over the top of him. He's okay though. Sitting up here is Dylan Cullen. Should be okay to continue. <coughs> Has to be said, very brave goalkeeping from the Mariners custodian. Still getting checked over by the physio, just to make sure he's okay to continue. Sportsmanship from Marko Yeshic as well, making sure that Dylan Cullen is okay to continue. Sent forward, hit a one there by Mlinovic. Ayama also on a yellow card. And he's just being told by Fisher, be smart, last warning. Next one will be another yellow. That'll hurt Marconi. Not just for this game, but 
next week they travel tough away game against St. George City he's Smythe on the turn and Hilton comfortable with the save Clears away. Daniel heads it back. Handball there, it seemed, from Ski Kluna. Stanzo will take the set piece for Marconi. Delivers it toward Windust and Milgate, but headed away by Deng. And they almost lost the ball there. And Ayama sends that one into the boxes behind the goal. Corporate boxes they are. the changes for the visitors in comes Alex Guntunas out goes Harry Menem Nassus has also come on at left back. Fireworks going off not too far behind us here at Fairfield Showground. And a real beautiful night for football here. Rocco Smith that's come on for the Mariners. And how about that for a run? And the ball as well forward here for Nassus. Nassus did come on. Lucas Smythe also came off. There. Bad challenge. And the referee brings it back. It challenges on Brady Brentman. Yellow card for Mlinaric. Lots of yellows this evening. I don't think we had as many goals. Would have made it for a very exciting game. Not to say it hasn't been. Comes in toward Deng. Headed away. Offside flag is raised though on the near side. Still just over 15 minutes remaining here, so lots of time left for the Mariners to try and get something out of this game. Hilton sends it toward Yeshic. Had a one by Deng again. He's been dominant in the air. Flicked on here for Temulkovsky, who just pulled out of that one with Cullen. Comes back for Yeshic. Back for George. Daniel. Mlinaric. You can hear the call from Yeshic to play the line. 
Now Massas. He's step up. Overlapping run down on this near side by Paragali, but wasn't spotted by a teammate. Brantman turns. Goes it to Guntunas. Brantman again. Twisting and turning. Maya staying with him. Skikluna. And Temelkovsky back defending and winning the throw as well. Committed play from the striker. Hills have doubled their advantage. They lead against Manly by two goals to nil. Not a happy return for Patrick Swanswijk in that one. Here's Timulkovsky. Great ball from Ayama. Great vision. And the execution was just as good. Costanzo now into the area. Costanzo, a cross goal. He should have been more selfish in that situation and went on his own. He looked to tee up. Yes, he did everything right there, Dom Costanzo. Bar the finish. Now Yeshich plays it forward, and that'll be a yellow card for Paragali. He's first of the game. Mulkowski coming to check on the welfare of his captain. I feel as though Fisher may have allowed the play to continue. Mike Rooney did look like they were in a very good position. It should be okay to continue. Gets back to his feet now. Maya will take this one and deliver into the area. Guinness will be desperate for his team to gain a bit of breathing space. Maya delivers. He's almost caught the keeper out there. Not sure he meant that one or not, but Cullen was scrambling and in the end tipped it over the bar. Franco Maya almost catching the Mariners keeper out there. And it's out of your shot, but James Hilton is standing at halfway. He said it earlier, he's not afraid to get up and out of his box at <laughs> halfway now. Definitely showing he's got no fear. Ball comes in again from Costanzo. Not really dealt with by the keeper. It'll come back at him again. Here's Costanzo once more. Offside though. Flag was raised immediately. So the 10 minutes remaining here at Marconi Stadium. It's the home team. That lead 1-0. Courtesy of James Temulkowski. Returning from injury after three weeks out. The last game he played was against Sydney Olympic. Ball forward now for Yersic. Holding off Deng very well. And playing a delightful ball in for Bowman. Into the box toward Temulkovsky. Well defended by Paragali. Craig Fisher showing that he can show some acrobatics too. And now looking to break rather Mariners. 
It's Nassus. He shot blocked well there by Milgate. And again, Milgate strong in the challenge. And Maya even back there defending. Tim Wilkowski's touch doesn't work out for Costanzo. It's a late challenge from Costanzo as well. Thapa, wide for Nassis. Back for Thapa again. Ball into the area. It's a good one, but cleared away. Costanzo, no options. Look the tight clearance there from Costanzo. And Sakena straight away looked toward the bench. Wouldn't be surprised. If the Marconi coaching staff make a change soon, but first they've got to be aware here. Again, Maya the one with the clearance. And Guntunas gives that one straight back, though, to the Marconi Stallions. And they win the free kick. Windus leads this one for Hilton. Sends it toward Yashic, but dang, good in the air. Guntunas clears away, and Milgate's been fantastic in this game. Hasn't really put a foot wrong, I'd say, all game. Almost set up that chance for Windust when he headed that ball across the goal in the first half. And defensively, well, he's done his job. Daniel back from Linaric. Kikluna goes down under the challenge from Ayama. It'll be Milislav Popovic to come on for the Stallions. And Costanza does well to poke that ball forward for Temulkovsky. Temulkovsky back heels it for Costanzo. That would have been a nice goal, that one. The two of them put the pressure on to win the ball in the first place. Temulkovsky, the space just wouldn't open up. He did the right thing in the end. Costanzo shot blocked, though. Yes, it's beat into the ball by Deng. Guntunas under pressure, plays it forward. Straight to Hilton as Linaric goes down. Not too many defensive options on the bench for Marconi. Could mean that Winder slots into the centre of defence if Linaric can't continue. And a bit of a reshuffle as into who slots in at right back. is back up to his feet but walking off I think you get a bit of an extra assessment here as Popovic prepares to come on and Popovic does replace Mlinaric so Windows does suspected has slotted into centre back and Franco Maia who's already back doing some defensive work now slots in at right back as Popovic goes into the right wing roll. Hilton.
Hamilton sends it towards him. Wilkowski tried to flick it on to Yashic, but he didn't get the purchase on the header as he would have liked. And Cullen calms things down. Cullen just heads away. He's Costanzo now. Bowman's in there in support. Space opening up for Popovic and the pass just blocked. Costanza judged to have been fouled there as well. So free kick to the home team. In a decent position. Maybe just a little too far for a shot on goal. And a whole heap of contenders for this set piece. Yes, it's the first to turn around and walk away. We've seen him score some special goals. Maya now loses the battle. It's left between Temulkovsky and Costanzo. I think Costanzo will want this one, though. Temulkovsky now well, still there. I thought he was about to walk away. It may be Temulkovsky that strikes this. It is Temulkovsky, but over the bar, not challenging Cullen with that effort. Dust heads that one forward. He's Popovich first touch. Gives away the foul. Driving through the midfield there is Kikluna. Wide for Paragali. Back into the area. Good ball. And Hilton will come out and collect that. No pressure here on Hilton. It took a while to come. The Mariners are only losing by the odd goal, but I feel as though it's Marconi who looks the more likely. Can that change here? Space, a lot of space here for Guntunas. Popovic working back and makes a great challenge. Milislav Popovic, well defended. Gives it away, though. The favours returned from the Mariners. Parks is Brentman fouled by Bowman. And yes, she plays it in for Temulkovsky. Temulkovsky coming in on goal, cuts it onto the left, looks for Costanzo. Costanzo just stood on the ball. Still Costanzo, left and right. Costanzo forces the save. Cleared away. And they'll come again, the Stallions. Instead, though, the Mariners now looking to break. And a smart foul from George Daniel. Earns the yellow card. But Mate Busek was off to the races there. Had George Daniel not fouled him, I think Marconi could have been in a little bit of trouble. Just a free kick for the Mariners. Some way out as well. It'll be a delivery into the area. As we enter the 90th minute here at Marconi Stadium. Can the Mariners sneak a goal so late on? Deng got there. Still bouncing about. And Hilton took his time to attack that ball. Milgate. Was shooting it for his goalkeeper to come. And luckily, when he did come, it was still there for the taking. And 
Tunas heads that on. Maybe a throw. Final substitution of the game for the Mariners. Nothing to lose now for Vilela. Rocco Smith comes on. Praya Thapa comes off. Dust. Clears it away. Yes, it's tried to flick it on towards Temulkovsky. Strong challenge from Temulkovsky. Uh, Guntunas just plays it into the feet of Bowman, who spreads it wide for Costanzo. And Costanzo get pa gets past one. And the referee brings the ball back for the earlier foul. Five minutes of stoppage time as well. Added on to the clock. Cullen setting up his ball. Yes, it will pull reins here. I don't think Costanzo is too happy. He wanted a go at goal but yeah she just said no I'll take this one captain's call yeah she sizes it up Cullen cheats a little and he cheated well because he had to make that save had he not taken that one extra step yeah she may have been winning away Having doubled his team's advantage. Costanzo goes short to Yeshitia. Gets it back time to waste a few precious moments in the corner. Last touch there off the Mariners. Yeshichim Bowman come away with it. He's Bowman. Cuts it back. Tim Wolkowski just couldn't get anything around that one. To put it into the back of the net. That's three minutes of the five gone to remain. Maya looking to throw this one long toward Bowman. Or Tim Wilkowski heading it on for Yeshich. Just couldn't get there. Breaks for Costanzo. Sizes it up. Costanzo stung the palms. Popovic. Another substitute. Another goal. And Marconi double their advantage. In the 94th minute, they secure all three points. And once more, Milislav Popovic comes off the bench and grabs another goal. Marconi will stay in the second place on the ladder. It took a while, but it came in the end. They've secured the points. The Mariners made it hard for them. The two substitutes, Temulkovsky and Popovic, make it one and two nil. Both players coming off injuries. Isn't that a welcome sign for Peter Tsikanis when Temulkovsky and Popovic both come on and both score? We'll have a change as well. Susovic and Malbasha will both come on here for the final moments of this game. Kostanzo and Yersic will be the ones to exit the field of play.
is Daniel. Turns away. Mark only want more now, but that pass blocked by Smith as Craig Fisher brings this one to a close here at Marconi Stadium. It was tough, but the Marconi Stadiums come away with all three points and a 2-0 victory over the Central Coast Mariners. It took until the 66th minute for James Tembolkovsky to make it 1-0 and break the deadlock. An excellent header after a fine delivery into the box from Dominic Costanzo. And in the final moments of stoppage time, another substitute, Milislav Popovic, popped up to smack the ball into the back of the net after Dylan Cullen had spilt Dominic Costanzo's original effort. And just like that, Marconi make it three on the bounce. And secure a 2-0 victory and a new three points. Keeps them in second place on the competition ladder just behind the Western Sydney Wanderers. The Wanderers were playing against St. George FC tonight. They lead 4-2 in stoppage time there. And the other game on, going on at the same time sees Hills United leading against Manly United 2-0. Earlier in the day, Sydney Olympic in a dramatic game came away with all three points against the Wollongong Wolves. Two stoppage time goals overturning a deficit to win 4-3. Paul Apia Leichhardt made light work of the Sutherland Sharks with a demolishing 7-0 victory. But full time here at Marconi Stadium, it's the Marconi Stallions 2, Central Coast Mariners 0.